is ready for battle. Definitely one of Pro Magic's most extroverted personalities. Absolutely. He doesn't hide anything. A talker, <laughs> to say the least. He is a little, is, I don't want to say he plays slow. What's the nice way of saying someone plays slow? Methodical? Methodical. Yeah. Thoughtful. Patient. It's those buzzwords. Right. I will Ponderous. Say, yes. That's yes. A slightly. That's starting to get into slightly insulting territory. A bit of a pun there as well. Yeah. Give that Ponder's in his deck. Major's going to start off here with a Volcanic Island. We are underway between Majors and Martel, round number six. Both these players sitting here at 5-0. and oh. If you like Blue Decks and Legacy, you've come to the right place because there are going to be a lot of these moving forward. Martel going to sacrifice Blue to Delta. It's time to go searching for a land. Wouldn't surprise me as a volcanic island. We'll see what he opts to do. Is he has Major's four copies of Treasure Cruise in his deck. So he is kind of a Jeskai Stoneblade, Jeskai Delver-esque deck, though. Better to classify it as Stoneblade, though, as he does not have any copies of Delver Secrets in his deck. And this is a type of deck that we've seen Michael Majors have a lot of success with mm -hmm. on the Open Series. So definitely a fan of Stoneforge Mystic alongside True Name Nemesis. Pretty potent combination of cards. There is a beautiful volcanic island there from Artel. This is a Gataxian Probe, going to pay two life, so he's going to go down to 17 in the process. And Majors, well, might be time for him to reveal that grip in just a second. And he will. You'll see a Lightning Bolt along with a Probe, a Spell Pierce, a Flooded Strand along with a Tundra, and a Young Pyromancer. Of note here, Patrick, not casting the Gataxian Probe on turn number one. Yeah, he wants to save that to be able to trigger his Young Pyromancer on his second turn. Pretty straightforward stuff. Tom playing the land before alternate casting the Gataxian Probe to make sure that Michael doesn't have the opportunity to daze him. You're going to see this at the at the top level. People going out of their way as much as possible to play around days. It's a card that, when it's good, it's the best card in Legacy, but you do have the ability to work around it to some extent. Martel wants to make sure he knows exactly the contents of the grip here for Majors. So Majors will lay down the Probe, the Spell, Pierce, the Bolt, the Tundra, the Flooded Strand, and the Young Pyromancer again. Tom, for trying to figure out how he wants to lead out with his turns. He's got a Swiss Spear and a Delver Secrets in hand. He knows he's playing against a Lightning Bolt, too, so. And we talked about the methodical nature of Martel. He is rather slow in plotting when he is playing a match of magic, but to his credit, the decision-making process for him, he rarely gets it wrong. When you're, when you're slow and bad, that's unacceptable. Yes. But Tom is slow and very good, so. That's okay. There's a Swiss Spear. We're into the red zone now. Will there be a bolt here? Something for Majors to think about. So the decision tree here is he doesn't want to get his bolt dazed, or maybe he doesn't. But if Tom dazes the bolt, that means the young Pyromancer is in the clear. Majors will draw. Stoneforge Mystic is what he's found. Now it's an interesting, the game gets so interesting now because, you know, before his play may have been straightforward with Young Pyromancer. Now it's like, do I want to play this? Do I want to play Stoneforge? There's a daze. Also, do I want to get Taxi and Probe before I play the Young Pyromancer mm -hmm. to see what's going on in Tom's hand? Do I save it and hope that it just resolves? Major still hasn't cast that Gataxi and Probe yet. A free spell we oftentimes see on turn number one. We saw it from Martel. And what? Major's very patient. At this point, Michael's turn was absorbed. He has no mana left over. So I think he wants to save the Gataxian Probe for a spot where he's either getting a spell trigger or he really wants to know the information of Tom's entire hand. There's no point in Gataxian Probing now, not following up with anything, and then Tom's draw step is a mystery, and maybe that messes up the play you're going to make the following turn. There's Volcanic Island. Tom reaching into Delver's Secrets. It's an attack for one with the Swift Spear. Major's down to 18. And that'll be Martel's turn. Over to Majors we go, Force Will the draw. There's a Strand. This is a Stoneforge Mystic. And this is a great proactive line here from Michael. He's already bled out one counter from Tom, and if Batter Skull gets into play against Blue Red Delver, it is all sorts of trouble. And we've seen it earlier today. Batter Skull getting into play against Owen Turton while playing Blue Red Delver. He was not able to overcome it. Got Peter Ingram low both games, so one hit changed everything. The trigger on Stoneforge, it's time to go searching. Batter Skull or GTA, the options here for Majors. 
There is Batterskull. Michael just going for broke here. Yep. He has some tools to protect the Stoneforge Mystic. He has a spell pierce in hand. I believe he's picked up a force of will. And if Michaels knows the matchup here, and Tom's opening is a dead giveaway, he's on Blue Red Delver, the Monastery Swiss Spear, uh, gives away everything. Then Michael knows he can push this Batterskull into play, and that's going to be a game win, most likely. And with the draw of Force of Will, it looks like he's able to protect it quite well. Force of Will removing that Cataxian Probe that he has refused to cast. Also has a copy of Spell Pierce in his hand. Spell Pierce, a card that's actually been trending downward in Legacy recently. So Martel will take a look at the top cards. Chain Lightning. That'll flip the Delver into Insectile Aberration. And that's his draw for the turn. Tom rolling up the sleeves, too. It's time to get dirty. Yeah, he needed that. Needed a removal spell. Already had a bolt, but wants a backup one. So if he loses the fight over the lightning bolt, he at least has backup. Because Tom knows the danger here, too. If this batter skull gets into play, he's going to be hard pressed to win. Priority number one get that Stoneforge Mystic off the table. The chain lightning that was revealed is going to go after Stoneforge. It's so funny. I got an opportunity to talk with Tom in between rounds. He said, Stoneforge Mystic's so bad right now. Not even any good against the blue red decks because they just bolt it and you're stuck with a batter skull in your hand. And uh, this may be a spot where Michael is able to protect his Stoneforge Mystic and then batter skull kills him. We'll see. Going to search up a volcanic island, Will Majors. And Martell has initiated a battle. And Majors looks like he has some interest in partaking in. This is the whole game here. I think we're going to see a big fight from both players. There's Spell Pierce going after the Chain Lightning. Martel can't pay just yet. So we'll see what Tom wants to do about this Spell Pierce. You can see the score is 17 to 17, but this game is anything but tied. Yeah. Well, uh, very close. This is the tipping point here of the whole game. Yeah. If Michael loses this fight, he's way behind on the board, taking a lot of damage. Tom looking at a daze here as another piece to protect this chain lightning. Pro Tour champion giving this a thought. Again, did win Pro Tour Gate Crash up in Montreal. He's going to cast the Daze, pick up the Volcanic Island. The alternate casting cost has now been satisfied. Majors will look at his hand. He's staring at a Force Will over there. And he says, Daze resolves. How about a Force Will in your Chain Lightning removing these taxing probe that I refuse to cast? And I think with this backup Lightning Bolt, Tom is going to be able to win the fight. It's looking that way. All wild growing monsters. Swiss Spear, mind you. A couple of prowess triggers taking place. One from the Chain Lightning, one from the Daze. Chain Lightning bites the dust. Majors wins that particular fight. But it doesn't look like he's going to be able to win at this one. Martel going to sacrifice the Scalding Tarn. Search up the Volcanic Island. And you can tell Michael's hand, not a lot of leftovers here, just a batter skull and a bolt facing down two threats. And Tom proving the merits of the argument he made earlier. If the Stoneforge just dies in the blue-red matchup, not the highest power level card. There's a lightning bolt to make it just die. Three in the air, Swiss Spear. Three spells were cast. That's an attack for seven. That's a healthy turn. And all of a sudden, we're heading back Major's way. Majors will draw a card. It looks like it's a copy of Treasure Cruise. This is a Lightning Bolt going after the Delver's Secrets. He's got six cards in his graveyard. And he's got a Treasure Cruise now. These games can change very quickly. Yeah, before the, the Stone Blade versus Delver matchups, the power level of all the cards are relatively flat. Now with Treasure Cruise, someone can go from losing to winning in a much quicker shift than they used to be able to. This is an awesome turn for Michael here. He made his fourth land drop, so he's close to just being able to cast the Batter Skull in his hand. Based on this turn, he can be pretty safe in assuming Tom doesn't have Daze in his hand, because he would have dazed either the Treasure Cruise or the Swords of Plowshares. So if Michael draws land number five, he might be happy just slamming the Batter Skull into play and putting Tom to the test. Remember when Tom attacked for, for, for seven last turn and yeah. had a board and won that battle? Well, Treasure Cruise is a pretty powerful card. Gets Majors back into the game. He's at nine, but he's got the batter skull that you mentioned. 
He's also got a lightning bolt again, so the next threat is basically taken care of. And for Martel, Martel's got some catching up to do now. Yes. There's the volcanic island from earlier that was picked up from days. And this is the problem with the catching up is that Michael's draw steps are so much better than Tom's. You know, the, it, the, the pressure is on Tom to find something to do. Well, now it's time for Martel to take a cruise. So he's drawn three cards. Delved away most of his graveyard. Martel's follow-up is the Monastery Swift Spear. This is a Gataxian Pro. That'll turn the Swift Spear into a 2-3. We'll see a batter, batter Skull and a Lightning Bolt. Martel will draw a card. He's already played a land for the turn. In for two, he's going to go. Majors is going to go down to seven. Somebody is looking for land number five. Well, Michael's in enviable territory of lands are good and spells are good. The brainstorm may be best. He'll start there. One is a ponder. Two is a flooded strand. Three is a lightning bolt. All pretty good here for Majors. Got to put two of those back, of course. Critically, land number five. Setting up a batter skull for next turn. Decisions, decisions here for Majors. Looks like Michael contemplating not even trying to go for the batter skull next turn. Yeah, it is a little bit interesting. He's maybe considering putting that on top and moving it towards the bottom of the deck. See, it is a rather tough decision here. It's always fun to try to watch these great players figure out what's the best way to brainstorm. It is a hard magic card to play with. Yeah. A lot of permutations. And Michael always has the option of cashing in the known for the unknown. He can also simply say, I'm fine with drawing these cards. I even shuffle his deck with the fetch land. There's a lightning bolt of the Swiss That's going to get off the table. There's a flood of strand past the turn back. Majors with the bolt in hand. Not sure the way he organized the top of his library. Ponder and Batter Skull are over there. That's all we know. We'll see what his draw is next turn in just a bit. But we're heading Martel's way now. He's drawn his card for the turn. Now he's in the think tank. And now if Tom has no defense, which appears is the case, he can either try to represent strength, just cast his stuff, and hope that Michael does not have the guts to tap out for a batter skull, or he can brainstorm looking for help. So this is a spot where Tom's got to try to figure out what kind of player is Michael, and what other leftovers could he have? There's a land. It's a flooded strand. This is a swift spear. Sacrifice the strand. Marcel going to go down to 14. There is a volcanic island. Not as beautiful as the first two. Nope. Hopefully Tom does well in this tournament so we can replace that <laughs> revised one. Get another four in black border. See what he wants to do now. Swift Spear got in. He's got a brainstorm in hand. You see the Delver too. He's got a brainstorm now. So it's time to take a look at the top three. Well, maybe Michael might want to stop this right now. He's going to respond by bolting the Swift Spear. So now it's one, it's two, it's three. Force of Will, Delver, and a Treasure Cruise. And it has, will is what the doctor ordered. It is, and it has not been that long since Tom Treasure Cruise, and already his graveyard's back to stocked up. Six cards in there right now. Seven with the Brainstorm. I mentioned Jeez. this before. I don't know if Blue Red Delver is the best, tre the best deck that plays with Treasure Cruise, but it's the best deck at maximizing Treasure Cruise. This deck is nothing but velocity. Delver Secrets now. That'll come into play. Montel will take a look at his graveyard. He'll see seven cards there. Going to try to cast a batter skull. Will Majors is going to search up a land with a flooded strand. But Mr. Martel <laughs> has a counter spell ready. You see our spotters say, hey, here's a germ token. And Tom says, I don't think so. And Tom knows the top card of his deck is a treasure cruise. Flipping Delver. Not bad. And now peeling three. It's almost like he drew it up that way. 
a clinic. Three cards coming here for Martel. Lightning Bolt among them. Three plus three? Oh, is that six? Is that exact lethal? That is exact lethal. Sometimes he makes it look easy. Ever wonder why he's a legacy Grand Prix champion? Neither do I. Tom Martell up a game here over Michael Majors. Blue, red, and Delver up one over Jeskai Stoneblade. We'll take a look at the sideboards. You've got Majors in front of you. One Council's Judgment, a Wear Tear, two Containment Priest, two Core Firewalker, three Fluster Storm, an Electricery, a Pyroblast, three copies of Meddling Mage, and a Sword of Fire and Ice. So I like the sword in this matchup a lot. Protection from blue and red, plus shooting down little things. Very nice against a blue, red creature deck. So, so you know. Expert, expert analysis. We'll there. break it down in the video tech for you later. Perfect. The, the Sword of Fire and Ice, I think, is going to be good here. A copy of Pyroblast, one copy of Electricery, very nice. It can either answer Delver or Secrets before it flips or clean up Young Pyromancer and all the tokens. I think Core Firewalker is very well suited for this matchup. It, it's very powerful against Monastery Swift Spear and Young Pyromancer, and it's not something that's very easy for Tom to kill. A lot of these lists can't kill it at all. Uh, I think that Council's Judgment is probably a little too slow for the matchup. Three mana removal spells are not very good against one and two mana permanents. And, uh, so, and maybe the Fluster Storm's coming as well. Try to fight over Treasure Cruise. Martell's side of thing. We'll see a Null Rod, two copies of the Sulfuric Vortex, three copies of Fluster Storm, a Sulfur Elemental, an Electricery, two Smash Smithereens, two Graph Trigger Skates, two Pyroblast, and a Hydroblast. I, what do you like there? I think the Hydroblast and the Pyroblast can come in. I like bringing in some of the anti equipment cards as well, the Null Rod and the two copies of Smash the Smithereens to do a lot of work in that respect. I don't know if Tom's going to want to go to something like Sulfuric Vortex. Even though Michael is the control deck in the matchup, he can go on an aggressive tilt, especially if he finds true name nemesis. So, so Fork Vortex might be a little bit too risky, but I do like bringing in the soft counters alongside with the anti-equipment cards, because that's the most interesting thing that Tom's playing against in the matchup. And Michaels is able to sneak a piece of equipment into play, especially with true name nemesis. Tom's going to be hard pressed to win. We saw that game was all about Michael trying to sneak a batter skull into play and Tom being just able barely to win the fight over it and taking the game. So anything he can do to shore up his liability against equipment, I think it's going to be really good for Tom. And it's how we see these artifact removal spells in the sideboard of Blue Red Delver and a lot of decks, honestly, now. You see Smash Smithereens. Again, some players going with Smelt or some other more interesting options where tear among the options available to get equipment off the table. You've got to be able to batter skull. You've got to be able to beat Umozawa Shite. And Trinity Nemesis, too, although Tom may not be aware that that card's in Michael's deck. Typically, when you see the blue, white, red skeleton with Stoneforge Mystic, Trinity Nemesis appears in some number because the combo of Trinity Nemesis and equipment is so potent. But there's no guarantee. Well, game two will be underway here in just a moment between Pro Tour champion Tom Martell and up and comer here, Michael Majors. No slouch himself, but he is playing against one of the very best right now. Platinum Pro, Pro Tour winner, Grand Prix winner. Multiple time. Yeah. I'm surprised to actually kind of see him out here this week, and his work schedule is so busy. Tom California. loves Legacy. Yeah, he really does. He loves the format, and he also loves winning, and Legacy Grand Prix have been very good to him. Yes, so. they have. So I suppose it's not that surprising. Coming out from the Bay Area. Hey, he's out in the, uh, he's out in the, uh, you know, the San Francisco, yeah. San Jose area. I, I think. Believe. Uh, he, I think he flies out of SFO, so okay. he's pretty close to San Francisco. Oh, it's no short flight, I'll tell you that much. Works in Mountain View, which I believe is a little bit south of San Francisco. Now, you're, you're the California guy. I don't know anything about that. California is a big place. It's just true. It's not small. Let's see what Majors can put together here in game number two. Game number one was... Uh, you know, that kind of back and forth, it was really interesting to watch. But, you know, we talk about Tom's pace of play, and it is rather methodical. But at the same time, think about how that game ended. Everything perfect. No resources left. Only a couple of lands in play and a 3-2 flyer, getting Michael to exact zero. Yeah. There were two critical parts of that game, which is the fight over the Stoneforge Mystic and then the fight over Batter Skull. Tom was able to win both of them. If he fails either one of those tests, he loses. Mm -hmm. But his deck is pretty well equipped to win the, both of those fights. As you mentioned, able to win the two important wars that matter at the end of the game. Delve our secrets, the last spot on the table, flip, reveal treasure cruise. Well, I can cash treasure cruise, delve my entire graveyard, draw three. There's a lightning bolt, three plus three is six. Let's play a second game, shall we? Made Perfect. it look pretty easy. Yep. As he's been known to do. Tom just confirming that everything is good to go with the sideboard. 
Always a good decision. Make sure there are 15 cards heading over there. Make sure your configuration is where you want it. Looks like he may have missed sideboard a card here, so. I had a match at the Pro Tour where I counted my deck over and over again, 59 cards. Counted my sideboard, 15 cards. Count both over and over and over again. Look on the floor, can't find the card. That's my opponent, thank God they can't find it. I'm starting to panic. Opponent's getting a little annoyed because I'm looking around and my deck's not really able to present. I tell this to a judge. Judge counts it out, says there's 60 cards here. Yep. There it is. I counted about a half dozen times. That's good. That's good. 59 each time. A similar situation happened to me at Worlds on the other side. My opponent pile shuffled his deck five or six times, was kind of panicking or whatever, counted the sideboard. You know, that, uh, finally, he gives himself a reaff reaffirming, you know, head shake and he's like okay there it is we're good we're good so i polish off his deck 61 just <laughs> i call her because i'm trying not to laugh yeah and he's so mad he's like I, how did i do this i finally got it I'm, yeah i'm ready to go it was the re it was the reaffirming head shake that, that would happen he was just like ah there it is okay finally good to go i polish off dude you're you're one you're one over almost yeah you're one over i hate to be this guy but i mean we're in the world championships right now i don't know what to tell you Better safe than sorry. Full players going to take a look at their openers. Majors is happy. Martell is too. Game number two underway. Flood of Strand's going to put Majors down to 19. See there, Majors has a board in the core Firewalker. Your arch nemesis. Oh, yeah. Your rival. Well, in Legacy, the burn deck can overpower a core Firewalker. Or you can just lock out these decks with Ensnaring Bridge. There is a Ponder. But in lower por p power formats, it has been my arch nemesis on many an occasion. Let's see if this will resolve. And it will, so take a look at the top three here. A probe, a pyroblast, and a fetch land. Majors will consult the grip, see if he likes it. Well, he was without land number two in this hand. So I had to imagine he's keeping these three because it guarantees a land drop. Looks like he has interest in taking Probe first. And that's what he'll draw. And we'll pass the turn back over to Martel. Martel will draw a card. It's a copy of Power Blast for him as well. He'll play a Taxi and Probe. We'll take a look at Major's hand. We'll see a Jite, along with Electricery, and Pyromancer, a Probe, a Brainstorm, and a Treasure Cruise. It's a one-lander, Patrick. For now. For now. But Tom knows that Michael pondered and didn't shuffle. So I think Tom is going to assume that Michael drew a land, is drawing a land next turn. You want to know about the Power of your Taxi and Probe? Seeing Electric will definitely change the way Martel plays this game. Information, free spells, puts a card in your graveyard, synergizes with all the pieces of value in Legacy, you know? Filling up your graveyard with stuff, revealing spells to Delver of Secrets, and information really valuable in a format where there's so many soft counter spells and random weirdos you have to play around. Martel with the basic mountain before passing the turn back. A card that some like in this deck, some don't, but Martel has one of each basic this go around. I think once you have Sulfuric Vortex in the deck, it's nice to have a mountain, or in the sideboard. Once you're in double red territory, I like having a mountain. Otherwise, no. This is a Brainstorm. Martel will cross that off the list. Now it's time to see if he wants to do anything about it. We saw him draw a Pyroblast. He's going to cast that, go after the Brainstorm. Let's see if Majors cares. I do like the way that Majors let off this turn, leading off the Brainstorm, maybe saying, I don't have a second land. I, I just don't think Tom's buying it. And I think he's willing to assume, well, Michaels can probably shuffle the deck with the fetch land that he drew, which is what you see. And there's the Flooded Shrimp. We'll pass it back Martel's way. Martel will draw a card. It's a copy of Sulfuric Vortex. Okay, interesting to see that he was willing to go deep. But Tom does not have a second land, just kept the mountain. Perhaps a little greedy. Perhaps? There's no perhaps about it. <laughs> Majors will sacrifice the Flooded Shrimp. I mean, with a Pyroblast and a Gataxian Probe, it's not indefensible, but that is a greedy keep. Well, he does have plenty of red spells in his hand. Looks like he's got some protection here and at least one Lightning Bolt, potentially two, also a Chain Lightning, so. The problem is that he's not favored in the late game. Sure. It's not just about can he defend himself, it's can he get something proactive going before Michaels overpowers him with True Name Nemesis, with Batter Skull. It's not enough for Tom to kill the stuff that Michael does. He has to do something proactive. Young Pyromancer. There's a good taxi throw. Bolton responds. He'll still get the token. 
The umpire master will now be off the table, most likely. And it is. Katak's same probe is going to resolve. Now we can see what Martel kept, which is two chain lightnings, a brainstorm, a treasure cruise, a delver, a secret, and a sulfur vortex was the draw last turn. So that's what he's working with. Somebody needs some lands, preferably one that taps for blue mana. Although I believe all the lands left in his deck qualify as such. He does have an island, along with four volcanic islands, four scalding tarns, three flooded trans, and three polluted delta. So if he does draw a land, blue mana will be available. Back to Martel we go. Looks like he missed. May have some interest in chain lightning this token, though. And I like it. Sure. I mean, he has to do it eventually. And with Treasure Cruise, you know, the sooner that he gets stuff in his graveyard, the more likely he is to fire it off on the cheap when he draws blue mana. Treasure Cruise has certainly changed the way that you will play games now, as here is a Ponder, a Lightning Bolt, a Force of Will, and a Core Firewalker. The Majors is looking at Firewalker, very interesting in this situation. Core Firewalker plus Jute already in hand. It's a combo. But he can't cast the Core Firewalker, so gonna let it go. Only one white mana in play right now for Majors. Firewalker is an interesting inclusion in this deck. It's definitely very powerful. The pro red matters quite a bit, but you do pay costs. It is hard to cast. Yep. But keep in mind, these blue red Delver decks, no wastelands. Yep. So, yes, it's challenging to cast, but you know that you know, your Tundras aren't going to get blown up and you're going to be stranded with no way to cast it. Maybe it takes a while, but that's okay. Take a draw. Lightning Bolt was already in his hand. Looks like he picked up a copy of Chain Lightning. Very similar artwork. So it does look like a Lightning Bolt this go around. Take a look at the graveyard. Seven cards down there. Not going to cruise, though. May have to discard if he does cruise. So, I think he's willing to trade with Tom and then try to get himself in a spot where he's lower on resources and then can treasure cruise. Let's see what Majors has this time. Well, there's Cruise. Michael would have to discard the hand size anyway, so. Cruise is good. An island, a tundra, and a ponder is what Michael has found. This allows him to play his land for the turn. Maybe do a little something else, too. There's that. Plenty of cards in his hand. He'll cast a ponder. Take a look at the top three. Flooded Strand, the Force of Will, the Young Pyromancer among them. Looks like he's got some interest in keeping here. With a Jitte in hand and so many spells, I feel like Young Pyromancer is just awesome. He can't do it this turn, but next turn he might be able to start doing some, some real work. Yeah, he kept the Force of Will. That allowed him to protect himself. He does have a blue card to remove. Looks like Michael does have to discard a card here, however. This was maybe the fear. Maybe he has seven. Looks like he might just have exactly seven. No, it looks like he's on eight yeah, cards. he's on eight and has a discard a card. Considering maybe a lightning bolt, perhaps electricery. He's got a lot of bolts. Yep. Lightning bolt is the card that is discarded. Martel, already you drawn his card for the turn? He'll discard a treasure cruise, pass the turn back over to Majors. Majors draws a copy of Young Pyromancer. I knew that was coming. You see the island in his hand. There's this. Here's that. Back Martel's way. The taxi probe, it looks like, is the draw. He'll fire that off. His major's willing to show him the grip. He's got a spell pierce. He knows that. I, I think he knows that that's Tom's draw because he hasn't probed in a while. Yep. So there's an argument for saying, well, I'm not going to let you draw a land this turn. But I, I think at this point, Michaels is more concerned about protecting the young Pyromancer than, ha than having Tom not find land number two. Brainstorm Martel's draw. Especially since there's only the one draw step that he gets here. It's possibly just misses again, and then you get to keep the spell pierce. There's Chain Lightning. That's going to get the spell pierce. Here comes an elemental token. Back Major's way we're going to go. He's going to draw that Flooded Strand he knows about. That's land number five for Force Will conveniently. Or Jute equipped with Pyroblast slash Spell Pierce available. I've seen worse spots to be in. It's time to suit him up. In for three we go. Two charge counters coming on the Jute. Martel will draw a card. Scalding Tarn. So lucky. Yep. Top decks of land and everything. Basically the luckiest guy in the world. I know. We'll see if he can work his way out of 
what looks to be a rather large problem. And start by sacrificing the fetch line, go down to 12. There's Volcanic Island. And Mr. Martel has quite a bit of work to do. And Michael with a grip full of bolts and counter spells. This is going to be tough. Not to mention Jitte. Uh, that card's pretty good too, I guess. He's going to sacrifice. The flooded stretch here will majors in response to the ponder. I think somebody's got a plan for their pyroblast. Potentially spell pierce here. But yeah, I, I, I think it makes sense to hold on to the other counters as long as you can, because the pyroblast is a little narrow. Time to untap. It's a draw. True Day Nemesis comes rolling off the top of the deck. That's a blue card to go along with the force of will. If the alternate casting cost is what Michael does desire. An attack for four. See if Martel wants to make a move potentially here. Just consulting his grip. Major's looking at his. He'll pump once. He'll pass priority. It'll be just... damage total is four, five, six. Up to three charge counters here. And you can see in Major's hand, he's got the bolt, the electric trickery, along with the force of one of true nemesis. It's a wrap. Martel will pack it up. Michael Major's going to tie things up here. Against Tom Martell, just got Stoneblade, and a blue, a red, a Delver going to game number three. I like not casting the true name nemesis there. Michael can't really lose either way, I think, but he easily has the win on board. So no reason to leave the Force of Will shields down. Do have quite an interesting result for you guys right now. A little, uh, little message out there from Ely Cassis, legacy mm -hmm. aficionado, and for my money, has the best collection of any player I've ever seen. I don't know about you but Ely's collection is, boy, is it something. Well, he's a dealer, has been playing for a very long time, and cares about what his legacy decks look like. Yes, he does. The sum of this means that his collection is excellent. You and I got to bat a little bit. You yeah. borrowed his deck to just get in some games, and I could tell you were a little nervous handling the cards. Uh, it's a lot to take on when you know, you're sitting down with a player who clearly values his cards very highly. He's, uh, you know, a lot of his cards are miscut, which mm -hmm. makes them more valuable. Most of his dual lands were, or they were a foreign black border. Or basically, whatever is the nicest addition of a card you could have, he has it. I was blown away. I was, I was talking with Anthony Lowry, and I was sitting next to a friend of his who was sleeving up a black-green entomb loam kind of attrition control deck. And the street value of this guy's deck had to be north of $15,000. Yeah. It was all foil, Japanese, everything. Basic lands were all summer. I mean, this was... Uh, also, there's just random cards like Chains of Mephistopheles in his deck that are worth quite a bit of money. It was it was impressive. Cassis's Cass deck, for the record, the deck that we got to play against you. You were playing Burn. I was playing his kind of his. It's a it's kind of a Grixis mid range deck. I don't want to say Grixis Delver. It just doesn't feel right. He doesn't have Delver in his deck. He's got Young Pyromancer, a couple cups of Baleful Strix. Dak Faden is making appearance there. He's six and zero so far. Dak Faden is a dealer. His deck, we've talked about, you know, Treasure Cruise decks, and Martel's playing quite a good one. I think that Ely's deck is the best Treasure Cruise deck I've seen so far. If you're just looking at putting stuff in the graveyard and drawing proactive things, it's better than Blue Red Delver, yeah. which I didn't think was really possible. But I see so many cards. You see a lot of cards. And, and Dak Faden, yeah, finds Treasure Cruise, puts stuff in the graveyard. And if you think your Batter Skull's good, steal that thing. Yep. Best Thief in the Multiverse, I believe he's known as. Well, he might be. He does have a copy of Notion Thief in his main deck this weekend. Oh, the stories he may be able to tell with that. Very good against Treasure Cruise. Good in combination with Dak Faden. <laughs> Dak Faden's, uh, Dak Faden's <laughs> Faithful Saluting, it, it targets. Oh, you just go after them? You, you get to draw two, which means they have to discard two, and we get to draw two. Yeah. How about that? That's a, that's a pretty hard That one. is a combo. I've gotten to do that a couple of times. Your opponent, they, they don't really like to play anymore after that. Well, that's because they don't get to play anymore. They're done that, for. That's correct, yes. So we'll see if he can keep it going. Maybe perhaps we'll have him in our feature match soon here. His deck is beautiful, and his deck looks to be pretty good as well. But right now we have Michael Majors and Tom Martell here, both sitting at 5-0 in round number six here from New Jersey. Martell going to make sure everything is good to go before presenting. And we'll have game number three underway for you in just a moment. Tom having some issues here presenting. Quality play at the table, that does not elude him. No. Figuring, making sure there's 15 cards in the sideboard and 60 cards in his main deck, 
before he goes into games two and three. This has proved problematic. Methodical. Thoughtful. Ponderous. Ponderous. I like ponderous the most, I think, of the bunch. It's funny, I've known Tom for a while now. I've got to watch a lot of his matches, and, you know, he, he says, there are few players that I want in the tank against me less yep. than Tom. We're just like, oh, his brain is going, and he's trying to figure things out. Uh, how do I distract him? What do I do? What can I do to make him stop thinking? Because once he starts thinking, he always <laughs> seems to figure it out. <laughs> it just takes him a second. But if game one is any indication, he gets it right more often than not. That game just not really able to operate. Kept the risky hand, didn't work out for him. We'll see if he does that again. Looks like he's going to keep majors. We'll take a look at his start in seven. He's got a decision making. You can see a lightning bolt over there among the cards. It looks like a hand that only land maybe a tundra. Now it looks like he's got a couple of copies of lightning bolt of swords, force. Looks like maybe the land count is a little bit low, but he will keep it. Game number three underway. Well, <laughs> this is why this is the best card, because now we get to know exactly what it is. Okay. For a minute there, I thought I didn't see a land. There's a scalding target between those two lightning bolts, along with, again, the two bolts, the Force of Will, Stoneforge Mystic, Treasure Cruise, and a Source of Plowshare. So no cantrip to improve this hand, and I believe Michael's list with no copy of Plateau. Mm -hmm. So we can't get red and white mana off of the scalding tarn, but... This is a hand with a lot of upside. If he draws land number two, he's got a lot of removal spells, a Stoneforge Mystic, and he'll be able to work his way towards Treasure Cruise very quickly. I love these risky keeps, and then I love when someone gets probed. Yeah. It's like, all right, let's see what you were thinking about over there. All right, got it. Makes more sense now. There's an island, a beautiful one at that, Delver of Secrets. We're heading back Major's way. Major's will draw. It's a copy of Pyroblast. That's not so bad. Tom on the the Euro Island, the Venice Island. My favorite one. It is beautiful. Did you know that many moons ago I could have bought those for two dollars a piece, and then, I almost pulled the trigger on that. I almost bought thirty of them for two dollars a piece. You wouldn't even have to be in the booth. You'd be on a beach somewhere in the Bahamas. I have my own island. So I'd have an island in Venice. Yeah, That's what I'd have. Sipping on a pina colada. Instead, you had to hang out with me every weekend. Yeah, there are worse things. Not much worse, but there are worse things. <laughs> There's a ponder. Take a look at the top three. I was just a poor college kid who wanted some sweet islands, man. Yep. Little did I know. Going to keep with the Ponder. Take that card. Scalding Tarn is what it looks like was added to Martell's hand. He'll play a Scalding Tarn sacrifice, and he's moving and grooving now. Back when Legacy was blowing up a couple of years ago, I'm like, what's a good thing to spec on? And I eventually decided Beta Duels, because I'm like, you need a bunch of them. They're sweet. So I bought a couple Beta Tundras for $200 a piece. A couple months later, someone offered me $350 a piece for them. I'm like, man, I'm a genius. Sold them. A year later, I don't even want to know, you know, two you years were, later. You were a genius then. How about yeah, that? I didn't see it all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> there is the Monastery Swiss Beer. Red zone in for one. Martel can put Majors down to 18. Majors will draw a Volcanic Island. No white source of mana yet, but a second land isn't the worst thing in the world. I mean, I'm sure Michael will take it, but... He can really only do, he can really only play defense until he finds a white source of mana for the Stoneforge Mystic. Although at this pace, he can get himself towards Treasure Cruise if Tom continues to play creatures that he can bolt away or something that can be targeted by a Pyroblast. Delver secrets the draw from Martel. He's got a Chain Lightning Young Pyromancer over there. Pretty interesting hand. How to sequence it all, that's the tough part. He will take some time to try to figure it out, that's for sure.
Martell crossing off the contents of Major's hand that he knew about. Here's the Delver. That's another test spell. I think the prize here for Martell is the young Pyromancer. That's what he's going to try to clean up things with. Yeah. Majors with a spell pierce. He does have a Pyroblast here for this double. We'll take a look at the top card. That is a Smash of the Rings. This is a Pyroblast with the information. We're still in Martell's upkeep. And Smash is very good for Michael to know about. We'll make sure we are in the right spot this game, which is in the upkeep after Delver's Secret Sugar has resolved before the card goes to Martell's hand. Once the trigger, if you allow the trigger to resolve, you can't respond to the insect dial version becoming a 3-2 because it's all part of the trigger resolving. Mm -hmm. But you can stop Tom in the spot before he draws a card. So Michael gets to see what he's drawing there. It's a fun little interaction. Yeah. One of the many in Legacy. Young Pyromancer. That's the prize. At least Martel would like for it to be. Majors. Look at a force of will. Got to remove spell pierce. So no pyromancer here from Martel either. Everything he's tried has failed so far. He'll just pass the turn back over to Michael. Michael will draw a card. True name Nemesis. That's a brutal draw there for Michael. I mean, a land allows him to treasure cruise. A cantrip likely allows him to do the same thing. But true name Nemesis, one of the pure blank draws on that turn. And now Tom's the first one who gets to resolve a treasure cruise as a result. And he will. Three cards coming here for Martell. Looks like Monastery of Swiss Spear among them. True Nemesis, True Nemesis has great card as it is. One of, if not almost certainly, the worst draw there in Major Stack. And because of the Smash of Smith Reigns, it's not like Michael can go on some sort of equipment plan just yet. Scald and Tarn comes rolling off the top. That's much better for Majors. That'll allow him to go find a Tundra. Though, if Michael is able to get this true name into play, Tom can't kill it. Mm -hmm. it you know, he can Pyroblast it with it on the stack or what have you, but or use any other counter spell, but. Stoneforge Mystic can be placed in the stack. Don't forget, Majors knows about the Smash of Smithereens. Exactly. So we'll see how he decides to search for equipment. He's going to go with Batter Skull. Well, this is awesome for Michael because he can just pass with Stoneforge Mystic up. If Tom ever puts his shields down, then Michael can go, okay, put a Barrow Skull to play, leave up three mana. Now it's really hard to get this off the table. Mm -hmm. If Tom does nothing, Michael can go about his business doing other things at the, top, at, at the end of Tom's turn. So even though there is a smash in Tom's hand, Michael can make life pretty hard on Tom right now with the Stoneforge Mystic. That'll be Major's turn. We'll see what Martell can put together on his. He's got a lot of cards in his hand. There's a Flood of Strand. This looks like it may be a Chain Lightning, and it is. Stoneforge Mystic kindly lead. Martell said it just dies. He's not wrong. It's died quite a few times. Majors will draw another copy of Swords Plowshares. The big question here is, does Majors want to try to resolve a true nemesis, or perhaps it's time to go for a cruise? As he asks Martell, how many cards do you have in your hand? And Martell says, a whole lot. Looks to be around six of them. And Majors, no interest in casting a spell, it looks like. He's just going to pass back to Martell. Perhaps a little draw goes in order here, Patrick. Wait for Tom to tap out for something. Eventually, Tom has to put a threat into play. Michael can react to it with the plow in his hand and then maybe get a window for this treasure cruise. But if he runs a treasure cruise into a red elemental blast or pyroblast, it's a disaster for Michael. Swiss Spear into the red zone. Majors goes down to 15. Source of Plowshare is going to go after that. Marcel will go up to 18. Majors will draw and find a copy of Stoneforge Mystic. That might be the kind of card he's looking for, and he will play it. Martel will consult the grip. See a Chain Lightning over there. It's going to give it some thought before maybe letting this resolve, as Martel does have a copy of Brainstorm in his hand, being very patient with a powerful blue instant. Looks like it's time to cast it now with the fetch land in play, too. So three cards coming from Martell. Volcanic Island, another brainstorm, and a lightning bolt is what he's found. Time to put two back. So even though on the, on the surface it looks like things are going pretty bad for Michael, he's down on cards, he's got really nothing going on. 
the same is true for Tom's side of the table. It's, there's nothing proactive going on. There's not that many threats in the deck. And as the game extends, Michael's deck is, generally speaking, going to be better draw step to draw step. Because if Michael's able to resolve True Name Nemesis, Tom can't get it off the table. If Michael is able to find a way to finagle this batter skull, I know that's going to be a challenge because it smashes the smash mm -hmm. but it's at least something Tom has to play around. You should mention if he can find a way. Exactly. But something Tom has to have in the back of his mind the entire game, this GTA as well. All cards he has to be concerned about. There it is, the scourge of creature decks everywhere. <laughs> a card I'm a very big fan of. Really? This, is, this feels like it's done way more damage to the no, decks that you play. No, 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 no. I want a pizza cue with this bad boy. I like the Mazawa Shite. I played a very bad flow rock deck. It made all my crappy creatures good. Put it on Troll Sig. What are they supposed to do about it? That's it. Wrap it up. Put it on a Thrun. Well, Can't encounter it. Thrun. Can't thrun. kill it. <laughs> thrun wasn't a card then. Would have actually been nice. I had Ravenous Bail off instead. Not exactly the same. I did suit up a Dark Heart Sliver, though. Oh, good luck. What's supposed to do about that? I'm basically a 30, then. Right. Brainstorm going to resolve. There's a Polluted Delta. Martell going to cast Lightning Bolt. Get that out of here. thought about passing it back. Something to be mindful of right now is the round clock. You see it taking away the same there? thing. We're under three and a half minutes here, and neither one of these players close to generating a lot of pre uh, to meaningful pressure. Both of these decks way more reactive than proactive post-board. There's Volcanic Island there for Martel. Make it two. Looks like he knows he needs to get a move on, so he's going to tap some mana finally here. There's a cruise. Got a lot of cards down there. He's going to delve away. So it looks like three cards coming here for Tom. Absolutely. Force of will among them. A couple of burn spells, too. We're going to go back to Majors. Majors will draw. It's a copy of Tundra. Is he willing to play a spell just yet? That's the question. He's been very patient. Well, he, he respects the possibility of a Pyroblast out of Tom's deck here. And if he takes his whole turn just running something into a Pyroblast, that is a mess. Treasure Cruise for Majors. Pyroblast for Martell. That may have been the test spell. There's a true name nemesis. Does it resolve? Martell is looking at a handful of red cards and a force of will. It's in. And as the additional kicker draws Force of Will as his draw step, and now his hand is just a removal, two Force of Wills, and no clock. Well, no clock in a weird way. I think All we right. might be going upstairs, Burn we, Man. We can start Doman, I guess. Well, there's three. Put you to 12. How about six? Put you to nine. Any more? Well, we know he's got Smash in hand. And a Lightning Bolt. Well, Michael knows about the Smash. He's not putting an artifact into play unless Tom's tapped out. Yeah, okay, he could have catched each of that turn, but absolutely not. In for three, he's going to come with a true nemesis. He might just try to ride this to victory now. He's got a source of splash here, Tom, with no creature in play, so he's got the first one checked. Martell's going to play a fifth land. That's important, of course, because of Force Will. He can hard cast that bad boy. I mean, that might matter, but Michael's got the, the kill in play. Though it is important to mention, Martell, 13 right now. If Thomas to sacrifice that Scalding Tarn, that's a full turn off the clock. He's going to avoid it at all costs. A Ponder here for Majors. Take a look at three cards. A couple of lands. Those probably don't interest him. We'll see, though. He'll shuffle it away. Basic Plains, Basic Island, and Fetch Land. And no good. I think Michael is looking for more bolts would be nice. Another copy of True Name Nemesis is probably worth a gamble. But, Try to close this out as fast as he can. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you see the round clock here. We get five on time turns. Mystery cards to ponder. In for three. Martell's at 10. Let's see if Major's going to cast his other ponder or hold steady. He'll hold steady. Pass it back to Martell. Martell draws a copy of Scalding Tarn. And I like holding steady because it's an issue of time. Back Major's way. Beatdowns puts you to seven. 
Will he ponder now? I think it's I, I think it's too big of a risk for time. He'll give it a shot though. Take a look at three of them. An island, a stone forge, and electricery. He'll shuffle. Majors right now turn zero. Mystery card. Let's see what it is. It's an island. He'll play it. He'll pass the turn back. Martell, if our time is correct, should be turn number one here. We will get confirmation in just a moment. He's turn one. He'll have one, three, and five. Majors will have two and four. And for Michael, that might be bad news, actually. Exactly. I mean, it's possible this ponder offsets the clock in a bad way for Michael. And that's all part of it. He passes to Tom. If time is called during Tom's turn, that's turn zero. Michael gets one, three, and five. Mm -hmm. As it stands now, Michael's got to find a way to get an extra point of damage. Martell will pass the turn back. It's turn two. Brainstorm the draw here for Majors. In for three. Put Martell down to four. He'll just pass the turn back. Martell will draw. It's a lightning bolt. You can tell Martell, yeah, there's no world he's sacrificing one of these fetch lands. He can't. He's turn three. He'll pass the turn back. Majors. Which means that he can't hard cast the Force of Will. Mm -hmm. And even all casting Force of Will, that's three life. Yep. Or, sorry, one life, rather. So he can't even Force of Will now. Brainstorm time. Michael knows it's his last turn. Tarn, Strand, Mesa, Blech. No help. A couple of cards going back here in just a second for Michael. The interesting thing here is how many cards does he have in his graveyard? In for three. Puts you to one. Because he has a treasure cruise in his hand. He just passes the turn back. Perhaps he doesn't have very many lightning bolts to draw to. I guess that's the question. I mean, I would be surprised if they were completely sighted out of this deck because yeah. they're good removal spells against Tom's early threats. But if Michael has no bolts, there's nothing to cruise for. There's yeah. nothing else to do. Don't have a great look at how many cards he has in his graveyard. You can see some of these are exiled. Some of them are in the graveyard as he's already cast a treasure cruise this game. But for Michael, you got your opponent at one. You got to find one. Looks like Martellus made a turn effect. Says Bull you. Push you to six. How about Bull you? Something to think about. Yeah. Tom still has the possibility of getting to a kill. All right, puts you to three. Still got a draw. Force of will is what he's found. He's looking at a hand of all blue cards and smash the smithereens that would get it done. It's kind of that shoulder shrug. I can't do anything. I can't kill you. You can't kill me. I'd have you dead. I don't know if you want to concede or not. They'll have the conversation. Yep. That much we know. But we are going to come back to the booth, and when we do have a final result for you guys, we'll let you know once we do find out. But for now, these players will decide on if they will draw or if Martel will give the W over to Majors, who looks like he would win that game, give an extra turn. But this all harkens back to that ponder. Exactly. About. It, especially if Michael has no bolts left in his deck. If he's digging for a win, then go ahead and ponder. But in the spot that he's at, he's got to be pretty mindful of the cut. And it, it looks as though a draw was the conclusion to the match. Yep. And... You know, it's not just about playing the turns correctly. The clock's a factor two. The players can't see it. They have a time extension. But that ponder there, that ended up setting Michael back a full turn. As you see, turn five expires. Tom's at one, and all Michael needs to do is untap, draw, hit you with your name nemesis. He moves up, appears Tom, otherwise. Tom changed his mind. Tom, Tom changed his mind. Tom decided, hey, it looked like you were going to win, so Martel does concede to Michael Majors. And it's not like a draw is that helpful in that spot because the record is 7-2 and two to get to day two. Yep. So uh, for the purposes of making day two, a draw is good as a loss unless you go 6-0-3, oh, yep. which hopefully you know neither of these players are really striving for. So uh, Tom seeing that he was uh, dead next turn, 
decides to be a nice guy and back it up to Michael Majors. I think part of the reason, too, that you might see Martel conceived in that situation is because I don't think he wants to be in the draw bracket with this particular deck. Uh, the draw bracket, especially in the Legacy Tournament, makes you think about either Stone Blade S decks like what he's just played against, or the very slow and plotting miracles. And one in Legacy Tournaments, one draw often begets additional draws. Yes. Because once you're in the bracket, you're playing against slower players playing slower decks, and that can be a death sentence. That's